Well, I, uh, I have the awesome opportunity this morning to introduce to you Tiffany. Uh, so when we were at Purdue University serving with Kyle there, um, when we left, then Tiffany, got, Tiffany came on board like the same year. And so it's been nice to see that God has continued to, to build a team there at Purdue Pi Alpha, that God continues to do amazing things through the ministry there. And so I'm excited for her to come to share a word from God and also just to give you guys like, hey, this is what God is doing. And it's really amazing. So Tiffany, come on up and, and you can introduce the, the rest of the team that you brought with. All right. Thank you, Pastor Andrew. Really appreciate it. Uh, how are you guys doing this morning? Great. All right. All right. Uh, well, it's really good to be here with you guys. Um, so, uh, as I said, my name is Tiffany. Um, I've been at Purdue for four years. Um, so, yeah, so Andrew is part of the team that, like, kind of interviewed me, and then they left, and, and I came right in. So, um, and then uh, over here on the end, uh, Marlou, if you want to stand and wave to everybody, this is Marlou Peters. Uh, Marlou is from the Netherlands. Um, she came to know Jesus while she was in college um, in Illinois, uh, at uh, uh, actually the same town that I was living in. I was a staff pastor. Um, and then she uh, moved to Chicago, joined Chi Alpha there, and now she's working with us um, at Purdue and over at Iowa Tech, the community college in our town. Um, and then next up, we have Shiloh Gilbert. Shiloh um, also came to know Jesus while she was in college, going to uh, Indiana State University. Um, and so, uh, yeah, both these ladies have, have awesome testimonies. Um, at the end, we'll be available, I encourage you guys to talk to them and find out their stories. Um, and then lastly, Monica Adams. Hi, Monica. Monica is working with us at Iowa Tech Community College. You're going to see her in one of the pictures I have this morning. Um, yeah, so. Uh, like Andrew said, God's doing some great things, so I just want to be able to share all that with you. Um, so, uh, let me turn this on here. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to give you a kind of a quick update of some of the things that are going that are going on at Purdue and Iowa Tech, and then we're going to get to the word. All right. Um, so, yeah, so Purdue is in West Lafayette, um, about halfway between Indy and Chicago. Uh, so it was like five hours from here. Um, that uh, so that's where we're at. Um, our mission statement is every student from every nation. Uh, a disciple maker for Jesus. This is the focus of what we do. And so I just want to briefly kind of touch on uh, what that means to us. So um, every student means that uh, we believe every student from every school is important. Uh, a lot of times it's the four name schools, it's the big name schools that get all the attention. Um, but, uh, but we also believe, like I said, that every student from every school, and that includes the community colleges, which can be hard um, because they're two year schools. Uh, so uh, when I first came, we re-pioneered Chi Alpha um, at the uh, at, at uh, Iowa Tech Community College. It's much it's much smaller than Purdue. It's 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 a two-year school, and if you can imagine, as a church, if you can imagine that every one to two years you have to get new worship team members, you have to get new tech team members. Like uh, like it takes a while, right, to get those kind of people in general, right? Like you know, Pastor Andrew's making the plug this morning, like hey, we need, this. but like every one to two years, that's like what we're looking at at Iowa Tech, and so. You know, there's a joke in, in, in you know campus ministry that when you when you pastor uh, you pastor a campus group, it's like pastoring a parade because people are constantly moving. But pastoring at Ivy Tech is like pastoring a 5K. You're like, here's some water, and like, like they're gone. Like that's like it's just it's like that's the amount of time that you have with them. Um, and so we just we just were praying and saying, you know, uh, God, like this can only be you. Like we can't do this. We can't build this on our own. We need you to come and do something. And in my first year there, we only had a couple of us. On staff working part time, and now there are four full time staff there, um, and that's the group Marley leads up over there at Ivy Tech. Um, and God is really building community and family um, uh, at Ivy Tech. Uh, and just to share, share one quick story about some things that are going on there. Um, so this is on in the middle here. Uh, she's from Vietnam, and uh, she had kind of a Catholic background. She kind of knew of God, but uh, that was basically the extent of it. And so she came here. Um, and it was uh, it was cool because like I had met her at an info table, but uh, there was just not enough of us. And there were not enough of us on staff to just be able to pursue all the students that we wanted to. Um, and so, um, but I was discipling Monica at the time, and then uh, Monica was a student uh, was a student leader, and, uh, and when she came on staff, she went on separately, and so began to hang out with her, talk to her, begin to disciple her. Um, so on, like, fully gives her life to Jesus, um, decides she wants to get water baptized. And this girl, I mean, her life has been completely transformed. Um, just things that God has done in her life and just, um, just even just getting rid of certain things and, like, 
like lifestyles and behaviors and things that had, had been occurring. It's just amazing to see what God has done. So uh, we took her to the river and baptized her, which was really a special day. Um, we also want to see every student from every nation. Um, that means uh, reaching the 9,000 international students from 130 countries. Uh, this just gives you a kind of a, an idea. Every country in blue, there's country, there's students from that country at Purdue. So it's like the majority of the world, right, that we're able to, to reach there. Um, we, uh, we do things to reach out to international students, like our international Thanksgiving dinner that usually draws in about 350 students from 30 countries. This is the church that I go to in West Lafayette Connection Point Church. Um, we have the, literally the entire world come to our doorstep, the entire mission field. Um, these students are going to go back all over the world, be leaders in a variety of fields. And if you can imagine, if once they go back to their home countries, you know, they already know the language, they already know the culture. If we can send them back knowing Jesus and full of the Holy Spirit, can you imagine how that can change a nation? Uh, the incredible impact that that can have. You know, we have around 4,000 students from China alone. Can you imagine 4,000 Chinese students going back to China knowing Jesus? Like, that would change China. And the same is true for every other country that's represented uh, at Purdue. And uh, this is a, you know, students are, international students are more open to the gospel while they're here and they're investigating. It's a strategic but, but limited time to reach them while they're uh, at university. Uh, they're at every college and every, um, every university around the country. And I just encourage you guys, like, uh, think about inviting some international students into your home for Thanksgiving and Christmas. Like, it means a ton to them to be able to have, have family away from, from home, having people be able to reach out to them, uh, to have Christians in their lives that, that will love them. And... Uh, uh, I believe that when you win, win an international student to Jesus, you can not only win them, but their family, their city, and their country, because every life has ripple effects. Uh, and like I said, Marlou's a great example of that, like being from the Netherlands, coming here, meeting Jesus. She's now like sharing Jesus with her family in Dutch. Like, I can't do that. I don't speak Dutch. But she can do that, um, which is really exciting. Uh, it really just gives us a, a foretaste of heaven. You know, heaven tells us, you know, the Bible tells us that in heaven one day, Revelation 7, 9, that there are going to be a multitude from every nation, tribe, people, and language before the throne. And so that's what we desire to see. Um, another story, uh, this girl, her name is Nez. She's from Saudi Arabia. Um, and so uh, she's a freshman. Uh, she, actually got connected to her because she was in Madison, believe it or not, of all things. She was in Madison. Uh, she was going to school here uh, just for a brief time, you know, just to take uh, some English classes. And then she got into Purdue. Um, she said she never thought she would get into to that school, but she did. And, and so we were able to get connected to her. Uh, and so she came uh, She came with us. We went to um, we went to the Indiana Dunes, to the beach. Uh, and one of the girls on the trip, she was, uh, she was from India. And she said, you know, I've never been baptized. And I'd like to be, can I be baptized today? And we're like, yeah, let's do it. And so we baptized her. Um, and, uh, and so Nez is watching this whole thing and says, I have some questions. Can I ask you about, like, what this like what baptism is and we said yeah sure so uh so we sit for a while talking and uh and so and we've talked since then we've started meeting regularly we come weekly now to talk that our first conversation uh about the bible lasted six hours and so we were like okay maybe we should just like set up a regular time to do this because you know obviously you know we're, we're busy she's got to study for for tests and things and so maybe like an hour each week i gave her a bible error that she's been reading it just i mean literally devouring it it has all kinds of questions um, you know, she was, was reading a Matthew, then she was reading a Romans, and, and uh, it's, she had so many misconceptions about Christianity, but like her, she's so open, and I just, you just see all of it sinking in, and so God is doing a work in her life, and she hasn't come to know Jesus yet, but I believe in a very short time, you know, that she will, um, and so that's what it means to every nation. We say we want to see every student a disciple maker. This means we make disciples who make disciples who make disciples. Uh, this is one of Jesus' last commands to us in Matthew 28, is to go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. Um, and yet, uh, sometimes we see this as something that's really neglected in the church today. Um, at Purdue, like I said, we don't want to just make disciples, but disciple makers. Students will be eager to make disciples no matter where they go in the world. Um, we see this in, in uh, 2 Timothy 2.2. 2. We see four generations of discipleship. Paul is talking to Timothy, and he's saying, uh, you know, I want you to entrust these things to reliable people who will teach others. And so there's, there's four generations of discipleship here. Um, and so one example of this is uh, the girl in the middle of Dez. Uh, I discipled her, and Dez was discipling Andrea, who's on the right. 
Uh, and so, uh, so we, we started the year as, you know, we decided who that is, and this, this is with Andrea. Uh, Andrea is from the U.S., but she's, uh, she's Mexican-American, so she speaks Spanish fluently. And so she meets Selena, who's on the left. Selena is from Mexico, obviously also speaks Spanish. And so they meet, they hit it off, they become great friends. Um, uh, Selene also kind of had the awareness of God, but we're at Fall Breakaway. She's seeing students worship. She's seeing their passion for Jesus. And she pulls Andrea to the side and she says, okay, I, I, I want this. Like, I want to know God like you guys know God. And Andrea's like, yeah, sure. So Andrea leads her to Jesus. She begins to disciple her. And you just see that continuing. So then Selene goes back to Mexico and is able to have an impact there. And so it's transgenerational discipleship. Um, and then lastly, for Jesus, it means he's the center of everything that we do. It's what Colossians tells us. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart is working for the Lord. Um, and I, I just, I, I'm really passionate about this statement because I, rep, I believe it represents the heart of Jesus. That, that every student, every single person is important to him. Uh, every nation, he's a God that created the nations. Jesus is the ultimate cross-cultural missionary leaving heaven to come to earth to rescue us, a disciple maker. His final words were for us to make disciples. Um, and it's, it's uh, you know, this is also why you guys do what you do, because you guys, Jesus is the center of everything that you guys are doing here. And so when you pray for missionaries, when you give to missionaries, it makes a huge difference. It's not something that, you know, is gonna put your name in the paper or, um, you know, that you're gonna get a lot of credit this side of eternity. Um, and, and sometimes Jesus is the only one who knows what you do. But it matters more than you could ever know. Um, a conference we, we went to, we took some students to, they said there, there's two types of Christians. They said there are some that God has called to descend into the darkness, the darkest places in, the, in this world, you know, different nations and different places. And sometimes the university can be a really dark place. You know, there's some of the things that go on there. And they, yeah, this is where Jesus has called me to. But he said, you know, you cannot go into the darkness unless there's people that are willing to hold the ropes. <laughs> And that's what a church like you are. You guys are holding the ropes for missionaries all over the world that are going and preaching the light of the world to the darkest of places. And without you guys holding the ropes through prayer and finances, it cannot be done. So, um, so I just want to say thank you um, so much for believing in missionaries. Thank you for having a missions week and inviting me to come and, and other missionaries that you've been able to give to. Um, and I really just pray that God continues to bless you um, for your commitment to making Jesus known here in Madison and West Lafayette and to the ends of the earth. Um, so, uh, so that's a little update um, about what is going on there. Um, so uh, we're going to get into the word this morning. Um, we're going to start in Genesis. So it'll be up on the screen if you don't have your Bible. But if you have your Bible and you want to turn there, um, please feel free. All right. Um, so, you know, I, uh, I don't know about you guys, but like when I, sometimes when I read my Bible, I, I feel like, uh, you know, God will say, you know, God will tell somebody, something, you know, to, to not do something. Uh, and it seems like that's exactly what they do. Um, and I saw this meme, uh, I, was, uh, I, I was thinking, oh, this is exactly, <laughs> this is me, don't touch anything, my kid. Like, you know, you tell the kid, don't touch the hot stove, and that's exactly what they do, right? They want to touch the hot stove, they want to do the opposite. And yet we see people, you know, from the very beginning, you know, God says, okay, I'm gonna do all this stuff in the garden, you know, but don't eat this fruit. And what, what's the first thing they do? They're like, oh, okay, that looks good. I'm going to go do that. Like, I'm going to do the opposite of what, you know, of what I'm told. Um, and so one of the times that I was, as I was reading through, realizing that I saw a certain command of God that was dis disobeyed again and again was this command to scatter. And that's what we're going to talk about this morning. Gather and scatter um, is the title of what I'm going to bring to you guys. Um, so the first, the original command to scatter is found in Genesis 1. Verses 27 through 28, and we see God give this command. He tells them he's created mankind in, their, in his own image, in the image of God he created them. Male and female he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then after the flood, uh, also in Genesis, God reiter reiterates this again. The flood has come and then God says, it says that he blessed Noah and his sons, and he says to them, Be fruitful and increase in number and fill the earth. As for you, be fruitful and increase in number, multiply on the earth and increase upon it. So what was the point of scattering? It was because God had given people the whole world to inhabit, to procreate throughout, and to enjoy. But just as with the little kid in the hot stove that, that he just has to touch, so the people disobeyed God's command to scatter. And in fact, we see the result of this in Genesis 11. 
Uh, it says, now the whole world had one language and a common speech. As people moved eastward, they found a plain in Shadar and settled there. Then they said to each other, come, let's make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They used bricks instead of stones and tar for mortar. Then they say, come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we'd be scattered over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to the city and the tower the people were, were, and the tower the people were building. The Lord said, is it about, is if as one people speaking the same language, they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language. They will not understand each other. So the Lord scattered them from, from there over all the earth, and they stopped building the city. That is why it was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the languages of the whole world. From there, the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole earth. Um, so God tells them, you know, okay, I want you to go to scatter across the whole earth, and then in Genesis 11, they're like, we're just going to stay in one, one place because we don't want to be scattered. We don't want to be spread out. Uh, completely disobey God's command. And then it's interesting because in the New Testament, we see the exact same thing taking place. Uh, so um, so the, New Testament, the New Testament command is scattered. Uh, it happens in Matthew 28. Um, if you looked at it earlier, look at it again here. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So this is, in Matthew, this is a spiritual application for the physical command that was given in Genesis. So in Genesis, the command is to spread over the face of the earth and to produce children in the natural, to fill the earth. Now in the Great Commission, Jesus is again telling us to produce children, but the spiritual kind. He's saying we're to make disciples or spiritual children everywhere we go. We're to fill the earth with believers. We're to fill the earth with those who know Jesus. And so, we're to, and so in Genesis, yeah, they're, they're populating the earth for the first time uh, with people that are born naturally. But in, in, in Matthew, he's saying go and, and, and populate the earth with people who are born again, <laughs> who are born spiritually, who are born from above. And so uh, we see him once again reiterate the command. You know, Genesis, he gives the command twice. Happens here in the New Testament, this time in Acts. Uh, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So starting right in Jerusalem where they're at, just spreading out bigger and bigger until they get to the ends of the earth. But just like in Genesis, the people don't listen. <laughs> you know, you want us to go into all the earth, and they're like, you know, this leaves pretty good. Like, I think we're just going to stay here. And so, uh, so they listen, or they stay in one place. But again, just like in Genesis, where something forces them to scatter, so in Genesis, it's the confusing of the languages. And in Acts, we see it's a persecution. Acts 8.1. It says, on that day, a great persecution broke out against the church of Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. Uh, so you see that <laughs> they were told to scatter, you know, in Acts 1.8, go through all Judea and Samaria, and... and and, you know, make disciples, and when they did it, something else happens. The persecution causes them to scatter, and they end up in Judea and Samaria. Because God's intent was never for the church to stay huddled up together and not impact the world around them. It's necessary for, for the people of God to scatter so that the gospel can be preached throughout the whole world. Um, let me just give you an example of how this is practically played out during my time in Chi Alpha. Um, and it's, you know, as we see God doing amazing things there, it could be like, it can be tempting to think, oh, I want all these suits to stay here because we can really, like, we can really have an impact on West Lafayette. But the thing, the nice thing about the cycle of the school year is that students are, are always coming, but they're always going. Um, and even though it's hard to say goodbye, it's hard to, like, let students go, uh, in the end, you know it's a good thing because you know that they're going to be taking the gospel wherever they go. And so I am here in Indiana. Uh, the first person I ever cycled at Purdue, her name was Hannah. Uh, she was from St. Louis, Missouri. She came, uh, Andrew, you probably remember Hannah, right? So she came as an atheist, um, and uh, she, uh, somebody gave her a business card, just a simple business card that they had prayed over to Kai Alpha. She, she was running. She stuck in her running shorts. She keeps running. She's, she goes home, and she said there was something about the card. She just couldn't throw it away. So she sticks it in her mirror. Um, and uh, anyway, uh, long story short, she ends up contacting the, the number on the card. Uh, she's invited to come to water baptism. She hears all these testimonies. She gives her life to Jesus. And so I happen to come right as she, like, right after she got saved. And it was her last semester, my first semester. So I had the privilege of discipling her. It was so much fun. 
Um, and, uh, and then she moved to Texas, and so that's where she is right now. She's in Texas, and she's uh, living for Jesus and reaching people there. It's awesome. Uh, and then I disciple the girl named Timby. Timby's from Swaziland. It's a tiny country within South Africa. Um, and uh, so Timby's brilliant. She got her PhD in biomedical engineering and stuff that I will never understand in my life. Um, and so she got hired on Walter Reed. So she moved to D.C., um, living for Jesus there. Uh, I also decided with a girl like Cassidy, who's from Indiana, after she got her bachelor's degree, she moved to South Carolina, where she is getting her master's in public health as well. Um, I also decided with a girl named Caitlin, also from Indiana, first gen, her parents are from the Philippines. Uh, she moved to California to use her engineering degree um, after graduation. And these are just a few. And so as I've discipled some of these women, they've gone all over the country and all over the world. And they've been scattered around to, to like seats, <laughs> sharing the gospel wherever they go. So you might say, okay, well, if the point is scattering, well, then why do we even need to meet? On Sunday mornings, what's the point of having a gathering like this one, or a Wednesday night, or a prayer meeting, or you know whatever? Um, it's because the Bible also tells us, as the church, we're to gather. Hebrews ten twenty four to twenty five says, "Let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching." See, the key is that we do both. We gather for a time to be scattered throughout the week, impacting the lost and sharing Jesus. So we gather for things like worship services. We gather for things like prayer meetings, the taking of communion. And we scatter when we go to our homes, our jobs, out in the community, recreation, meals, however else we're involved. In order to be effective in going out into the community and reaching the lost, it's important that we come together on a regular basis. There are things that are to be done with a community of believers on a regular basis, as we see in Acts 2, 42. <laughs> it says they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Um, and so, for us, this is something that we do every Sunday night. So I'm, I'm what's called a resource leader, and I lead a resource team. Uh, this is my resource team. Aren't they beautiful? We dressed up and went out for milkshakes. It was really fun. Shyla's part of my resource team. So it was a great night. Uh, we had a ton of fun together. So every Sunday night, I meet with these girls. Uh, there's a ton of teaching. There's prayer. There's fellowship. Uh, you know, we do all the things that we just read about in Acts 2.42. Um, and it's, it's a time that we can get together and we can strategize and we can plan and we can pray and we can let God you know, uh, build faith within us. For those that are reaching, we can allow, you know, we share testimonies and we encourage one another. Uh, and it's a time of togetherness because we know the rest of the week we're out. We're going to be out. We're going to be reaching people for Jesus. And so, um, you know, but just as we saw in with the Tower of Babel story and with the, in the book of Acts, a lot of times the natural default of the church is to stay gathered. Even though God commanded twice, both times for them to scatter, they, they still didn't do it. And so that's because that's usually, usually we default to gather. I want to focus more on scattering this morning. So I just have three quick points um, and, uh, of uh, what, you know, why we scatter, what's the point of it. So number one, we scatter to obey the commands of Jesus. This is first and foremost. This is what the people of Genesis and Acts were not doing. And so the question is, what about us today? Because Jesus was really clear about going and making disciples. You know, I was just reading in Luke 6 this morning, um, and I was I actually texted this to, to my girls and was sharing with them. Um, you know, uh, Jesus was asking, why do you say, Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? And I was texting them, I said, you can't call Jesus Lord and then, and not, you know, it's, if Jesus is Lord, it's not about how much you worship, it's not about how much you say you love him. If you're, if Jesus is your Lord, then you obey him no matter what. Like, that's the definition of Lord is obedience. And so that's something that I was, like, getting out of the word this morning as I was reading it. And so Jesus says, go and make disciples. You know, and I, I, I grew up in the church. I love the church. I, I you know, I start, had been following Jesus since I was a little kid. It was so cool seeing all these little kids up here this morning. I, I followed Jesus from a young age. Uh, so I love the church. Um, but we used to see churches. It's evolved over time. It just has. And so we used to see church as a place uh, to invite unbelievers, especially Sunday morning. So it's like, oh, this is the place that you, that you come and you invite unbelievers to. Um, now, that's great. Like, that's fine to do that. But I think it's happening less and less. People are having less of a church background than they've ever had before. It's not like before where it's like everybody kind of was raised in that kind of environment. Um, and so if we ignore the command of Jesus to go and we only invite, 
um, that we're just we're simply never going to engage with the loss because there are people that just they aren't necessarily this isn't going to be the first place they come. We have to go to them. And so as the as the people of God, this is a core identity of who we are. We are a sent people. Over and over again, you see Jesus sending his disciples. You cannot read the New Testament and not see this pattern. I challenge you, read through the Gospels and underline or circle every time it says sin, sending, sin. It's over and over and over again. And then, we you know, one more time in John 20, Jesus repeats himself just to make sure that we got it. Uh, it says, he says, uh, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. So why does he send us? Well, this goes into the second point. We scatter to reach more people with the gospel. Those who have been scattered preach the word wherever they went. When you, you know, if we, if this is the only place where the gospel is shared, if this is the only place that the love of Jesus is made known to people, that's not very many people that are going to hear, right? Because this is one little tiny place. But if we, if we scatter all over the city during the week, it's like a farmer that scatters seed, right? Like, I, I mean, I was never a farmer, but my, my grandpa had a farm for a while, and so it's like, you know, when a farmer is scattering seed, it's not like, okay, I'm just going to plant this one little place, right? That would be silly. Like, you wouldn't grow very much. When a, when a farmer scatters seed, it is, it's, it's far, it's wide, and now, of course, we have big machines that can, can do all kinds of things. And so when, you, when you're scattering seed, you're, you're, you're scattering it as, as, as wide and as far as you can. And so that's, that's what it's like. Your, your lives are seeds that are planted in your schools, in your workplaces, in your neighborhood that will then grow up and produce fruit. You carry the Holy Spirit with you as the people of God. And so you carry his love, his joy, his peace. Why only keep that here for people that are here when there's a whole world out there that need to know the love and the joy and the peace of Jesus as well? Another way to look at it is like a football game. Uh, what happens to the football team that only stays in the huddle and they only talk about the plays and they never actually execute them? I mean, they have a lot of good plays. They have, I mean, they, they might have the best playbook in the whole NFL, but they wouldn't be very successful if they never ran a play, right? Um, the same would be true for a team that only runs plays, but they never huddles. They're never on the same page. You know, one guy thinks he's going along and then, the, the, you know, the quarterback's going short, you know, and, like, and, they're, and they're, not, they're not communicating with one another. And so your time on a Sunday morning or your time at a prayer meeting, you know, we had a, we were able to join last night for prayer. It's awesome to be able just to pray and intercede for the city. Um, and it's, that's, that's the point of, that's like the huddle. You get your instructions, your marching orders, you know, uh, to then go out and engage the community. You know, Pastor Andrew's like the quarterback and saying, okay, here's, the, here's how we're going to do it, guys. You know, let's huddle up. This is how we're going to reach the city. Okay, ready, break. And then you guys go out and then you execute how Jesus has sent you, right? And so... Uh, you know, it can be, um, uh, yeah, let me go to my third point, actually. So, um, yes, those who have been scattered preach the word wherever they went. And then the third point, we scatter to remember it's not all about us. It can be really easy to have every one of our needs met at church. Our spiritual needs, our social needs, our emotional needs, sometimes even our physical needs. That it can be really easy just to get comfortable here. Uh, you know, we, we get fat in a spiritual sense, right? Uh, you know, I read in a book one time, it said a church that gathers but doesn't scatter will be too fat. But a church that scatters but never gathers is too thin. And so there's a balance. Often we live fat lives in the church by never scattering. Philippians 2, 3 through 4 says, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but to the interests of uh, but each of you to the interests of others. Philippians two is written in the context of what Jesus did for us. He gave up his divine rights to live as a human because he valued us above everything else. And so, the question we have to ask ourselves this morning is: Do we value others enough to scatter ourselves as well, bringing the gospel everywhere we go? Um, in Kaiapha, there, there's a saying that says, gathered for a season, scattered for a lifetime. And I believe that this is what God has called the church to do, to gather for some of the week, to be scattered throughout the rest of the week. And so um, we're going uh, to pray <laughs> along those lines. Um, I think there's somebody that can come up and play. Is that true? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, and, so, uh, and so I just want you guys to... 
to honestly evaluate yourselves um, and uh, and and not ask like what I'm asking you to do because you're, you're I mean you may never see me again <laughs> but like what is Jesus asking you to do um, and so if everybody could just take a moment and just bow their heads um, and we're just gonna we're just gonna listen to the Holy Spirit um, we're just gonna listen to what He's saying to us um, there may be some of you guys in here that uh, you uh, you know that you you don't live as part of the gathered church, you know, maybe you come once in a while, but this is not really, this is not really your home, this is not really your family, you just kind of, you're in and out, and you know, like, you need to gather more, like, like, you need to be part of what this church is doing, you know, coming on Sundays, being part of prayer meetings, you know, uh, you know, joining in the life of this church, like, you need to live more as the gathered church. Um, you know, there might be some of you guys that say, you know, I, you know, I, I love this church, and I'm here, but I'm not comfortable. And I'm not going out, and I'm not like reaching the lost. I'm not sharing Jesus. I'm not talking about standing on a, on a table and, and you know preaching a, a sermon somewhere. Uh, you know that's fine. I mean that's you know that's all, all well and good. But I'm talking about just simply sharing the love of Jesus just easily with people. You know, if somebody says, "What did you do this weekend?" You know, tell them, "I hey, I went to church and it's great and like uh, it really just, like, just made my whole week." You know, just just simply sharing about what God is doing in your life. If you know nothing else, you don't have to know theology, you don't have to know all these things. You know, there was a, a, a man and John where they asked him, you know, how, you know, what do you think about Jesus? And they asked him all these really big theological questions. And his response to that was, I know one thing, I was blind and now I see. That was like, that was all he knew was his own story. So if you do nothing else but just share your story with people, that's, that's yeah. enough. Um, and so, um, yeah, and so we're just going to take it, we're going to take some time, and so I want to just be able to pray with you. Um, I, so uh, if if that, the first thing that I said, you know, the the gathering, if you know that, like, you don't live, you're not living as the gathered church, you know that you're not, um, you know, coming and participating, and you, and you feel the Lord telling you, like, that you need to do that more, like, you need to be more part of the gathered church, then I would just like you just to lift your hand and make eye contact with me, just because I want to be able to pray for you. Is there anybody here that would say, yeah, that's me, like, I need to be gathered more with the body of Christ? All right, we're going to move on to the next, the next point, uh, the scattered church. Is, is there anybody here that would say, you know, yeah, I come and I participate and I'm, 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 I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm committed to, to the mission and vision of this church, but I'm just not, I'm not living scattered. I'm not, you know, when I leave church, I, I you know, I, I do my own thing and I'm not really on mission for Jesus. And I believe that God is calling me to be more on mission for him. Is there anybody who would raise their hand and say, yeah, that's me? I mean, okay, great, thank you. Is there anybody else? Awesome. Anybody else? Awesome. Praise God. Praise God. And then the last thing I want to do is I want to give time for anybody who has not ever made a decision to follow Jesus. Or maybe you maybe you did a long time ago, but you've walked away for whatever reason and you haven't, you haven't been following Jesus. And you want to make a decision to come and follow him. Is there anybody here who would say, yeah, that's me, like, I need to follow, I want to make a decision to follow Jesus for the first time. All right, I'm going to have the team that's with me, uh, if you guys can come and just kind of spread out along the front here. Uh, if you raise your hand for any of these things, or maybe it's something else, uh, they're, they're here, they're prepared to pray with you. Um, if you need healing, if you need, uh, you know, if you want to know more about knowing Jesus, uh, whatever it is, if you prayer, you know, maybe maybe the thought of going out and sharing Jesus with people you don't know, like, maybe that's uh, scary. Um, you know, how do I engage my neighbors? How do I, you know, uh, they're, they're happy, they're going to be happy to pray with you. So we're just going to take a few minutes here at the end and pray. Uh, if you'd like prayer for anything that we talked about or anything else, please feel free to